Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I will be doing problems in the chapter motion in a straight line and the topic will be free fall. So let us directly go to the questions. We are going to revise co the concepts to the questions. Question number one. A pebble is thrown vertically upward from a bridge with an initial velocity of 4.9 meters per second. It strikes water after 2 seconds. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second square. Find the height of the bridge, velocity with which the pebble strikes the water. The first step in a physics problem is always to draw the diagram. So what am I doing by drawing the diagram? I can visualize the situation better. See, when you have, when I have drawn the diagram, you might think there will be some confusions. You can see I have shown a distance, a horizontal distance between the initial and final points. But it's not to be confused, there is no distance between the initial and final points. Imagine that you are in a bridge, you are at the edge of the bridge and you can see water and fishes in the water. You are throwing a pebble into the water, just think of it like that. You are not throwing a pebble from your side of the bridge to the other side of the bridge. If you can visualize that situation. So therefore I have shown that situation through a diagram. Now they have given that the initial velocity is 4.9 meters per second. So I have represented upwards since it is thrown upwards. And now uh, the pebble strikes the water downwards. So they have not given that velocity. We need to find it out. And acceleration due to gravity is given as 9.8 meters per second square. And it is downwards as we all know. And the direction I have assumed it as upwards as positive. What does it really mean to take a direction as positive? You can take you can take downwards as positive or upwards as positive. You should get the same answer. It's basically giving a direction through vector equations because using this equation of motion, we give a sign since they are all vector equations. That is v vector is equal to u vector plus a vector times t. s vector is equal to u vector t plus half a vector t square. And one more equation is v v dot v vector is equal to u vector dot u vector uh, plus 2 uh, two a vector dot s vector. Now, the time is given, interval is given at 2 seconds since it uh, is told in the question that it strikes the water after 2 seconds. Now, let's apply the first equation of motion that is v vector is equal to u vector plus a t. Since I have taken upward as positive, u is plus 4.9. So, I substitute in the equation v is equal to plus 4.9 minus 9.8 t since acceleration due to gravity is taken as negative due to its downward direction so we get uh, 4.9 minus 9.8 into 2 since time is 2 seconds and after solving get final velocity as minus 14.7 meters per second you might think why did we get the minus answer we got the minus answer since we have assumed upwards to po uh, as positive it's striking downwards actually now for the next step of the question we need to find out the height of the bridge how do we find out the height of the bridge? We can find the displacement that it is doing downwards. So we can see I have represented the displacement that is doing downwards as s vector. And in this question I have to take s vector as negative j cap or the negative direction. I just choose it as a negative number. Why do I say negative? Because I have chosen the downward direction as negative and the upward direction as positive. The basic fundamentals of uh, motion in a straight line that is displacement is equal to average velocity into time. I will represent average velocity by its conventional symbol. How do we calculate average? We calculate average by doing integral of v dt over the time interval t2 to t1 dividing by the time interval basically. So v average we know for uniformly accelerated motion what is it? It is v plus u by 2 that is final velocity plus initial velocity by 2 since we have already found the final velocity we can just substitute in this equation minus 14.7 plus 4.9 by 2 comes out to be minus 4.9 meters per second average velocity is again negative now when we find out the displacement it will come out as average velocity time that is minus 4.9 into 2 which you get as minus 9.8 since the displacement is downwards now height of the bridge is always positive so we have to take the magnitude of this answer and report the height of the bridge as 9.8 meter velocity is minus 14.7 meters per second or 14.7 meters per second downwards why why did i say the direction because velocity is with direction if they are speed we just need to mention the magnitude of the velocity in this situation 
think about it in uniform motion can we have changing speed i'm not talking about uniformly accelerated motion uniform motion no in uniform motion we cannot have changing speed but we can have changing velocity example is uniform circular motion interesting idea to think about a ball is thrown vertically upwards let the with the velocity of 20 meters per second from a top of a story building the height of the point from where the ball is thrown is 25 meter from the ground how long will it be before the ball hits the ground again the first step in a physics problem is to draw the diagram and now you can see the ball is thrown upwards i am representing u as negative 20 meters per second g is plus 10 and the displacement is downward so displacement is plus 25 meter why am i saying plus 25 plus 10 when in the direction is downwards because i have taken downwards as positive in this question now i am using the second equation of motion to solve this question that is s is equal to ut plus half at squared now u is equal to minus 20 meters per second since it is upward g is plus 10 meters per second square and s is plus 25 meter now i just substitute it in the second equation of motion i get plus 25 is minus 20t plus 5t squared when i take 25 to the other side it becomes negative of 25 now i just solve it like a normal quadratic equation there are two ways to solve a quadratic equation by splitting the middle term or using the quadratic formula that is minus b plus minus root b square minus 4ac by 2a so time how do i find it out now i have 5t square minus 20t minus 25 is equal to 0 if i divide by 5 which is a common factor for both sides why do i say common factor because 0 divided by 5 is just 0 so that's why we can divide by 5 on both sides so t square minus 40 minus 5 comes out to be 0 i apply the quadratic formula then i find out the time comes out to be 4 plus minus 6 by 2 it means the answer can be 5 seconds or minus 1 seconds the time taken for the ball to hit the ground should be reported as 5 seconds and not minus 1 what is the significance of this minus 1 second is important to know physically what does it mean imagine that we threw a ball from the ground with a velocity of 30 meters per second upwards the height it would cover in 1 second is equal to 25 meter and the velocity with which it finally lands up with is 20 meters per second so this minus 1 second tells us what happens previously with the ball so it's actually looking into the past Let's move on to the third question. A ball is dropped from a height 45 meter above the ground. Find the distance travelled by the ball in second, third, and fifth second. Also, find the mistake in the question. Logically, argue the reason. Do you think there's any logic with the fifth second? In fact, think about it directly. If you use the equation directly, h is equal to half a t squared. Why did I say that equation? Because if you visualize the situation, it is dropped. Means u is equal to zero. Why is u equal to zero? Because the observer is at rest and the ball is at rest with respect to the observer. That's the meaning of actually dropping. And I have taken the downward direction as positive. I already mentioned it. You can choose downward or upward as positive. But this question is convenient to choose downward as positive. Now displacement is forty five meter downward. So displacement is plus forty five. Acceleration due to gravity is plus ten. When I use h is equal to half a t square equation, I get find out time comes out as plus or minus three seconds. Again, the answer should be plus three seconds because time interval is always positive. Now, if I see, there is another formula for finding the displacement in the nth second, which is u plus a by two into two n minus one, or it can be represented as displacement travelled in let's say n seconds minus displacement travelled in n minus one second. Let's say in three seconds I travel ten meters. In two seconds I travel. 5 meters the distance traveled in the third second is 5 meters now if i directly apply the formula for the fifth second you would get a weird answer that is you would get 45 as a an answer why is it weird because it means that for the other four seconds the ball was simply floating in air you think the ball will be waiting and just sitting simply for four seconds relaxing and then going in the fifth second boom going down rather i think it's logically incorrect to ask a question based on the fifth second so we rule out the fifth second answer it's logically impossible in this question how if the height of the ball the height from which the ball was dropped is greater than 
particular height that it is like suppose 100 meter just a random height I took then probably we could calculate in the fifth second and we could report an answer for it but here the fifth second is absolutely illogical now if I see in the second and third second if I apply the formula for s nth I would get it as 10 by 2 into 2 and minus 1 why did I say 10 by 2 and u I didn't take any value because u is 0 so 5 into 2 into 3 minus 1 is 5 into 5 25 so in the third second times 25 meters similarly if you calculate for the second second it comes out to be 15 meter but I'm going to tell you another method by which we can solve this problem interestingly that is by Galileo's law of odd numbers what does it state the distance traveled by the ball in equal time intervals will be in the ratio of odd numbers that is if we split this uh, uh, the time the ball is traveled in three equal time intervals why three equal time intervals because it has traveled for three seconds I split it into three equal time intervals like one second one second one second the time traveled by the ball in the second second is between the time instance t is equal to one second and t is equal to two seconds so in the first second you would have traveled distance h second second 3h third second 5h so totally it has traveled a distance of 9h which is equal to 45 meter now we calculate h as 5 meter now if you substitute uh, in what we have got for the second second that is 3h we get 3h as 15 meter we get 5h as 25 meter so we can see we can solve this problem using Galileo's law of odd numbers which other situations is Galileo law of odd numbers useful it's useful in situations like uh, the tap dropping problem let's say a drop is falling from a tap after a continuous regular intervals of time or throwing a ball after regular intervals of time these kind of problems is Galileo law of odd numbers becomes very useful but remember that it's most likely when it's dropped or when u is equal to zero it can be applied more easily or it's right to apply it then only a ball is thrown vertically upwards from a bridge of height 25 meter with a velocity of 20 meters per second find the velocity strikes the ground with derive this answer using calculus you might be thinking why is this guy asked using calculus because it will help us get a new perspective that's why i've asked it in the question now in this question i have taken upwards as positive since i have taken two questions downward as positive so this is second question i take upward as positive to give equal importance to both so i i throw the ball with a velocity of 20 meters per second upwards since I have taken upward as positive, so use plus 20 from a bridge of height 25 meters. You might be thinking, what does this guy think? He likes bridge or something. No, 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 no. It's not like that. I've just chosen bridge because it was convenient. It came in my mind at that time. So, with a velocity of 20 meters per second. Now, u is equal to plus 20 meters per second. And since the displacement is downward and we've taken upward as positive, so s is minus 25 meter. Now, acceleration due to gravity is again negative because upward is positive, so g is minus 10. We just use the third equation of motion directly, that is v square is equal to u square plus 2as with the correct signs. So, v square is equal to u square plus 2as. v square, we have to find, and u square is 20 square 400 plus 2 into minus 10 because I have already told both are negative, the height, I mean the displacement as well as the acceleration due to gravity, that is minus 10 into minus 25. 2 into minus 10 into minus 25 comes out to be 500. 400 plus 500 is 900. So velocity comes out to be plus minus 30 meters per second by solving for the, uh, I mean the square, solving for the perfect square. Plus minus 30 meters per second could be the solution. But here we have to choose minus 30 meters per second as the right solution. Why? Because we have chosen upward as positive. So when the ball strikes downwards, it strikes the ground downwards, then obviously the our direction should be negative so therefore we should take v is equal to minus 30 meters per second now using calculus dv by dt is equal to minus g you might be thinking why i have taken minus g again because of the directional aspect or you can see that uh, the velocity is decreasing in terms uh, in the direction of g why decreasing because i have taken upward as positive so 20 is becoming minus 30 but here I've just taken dv by dt is equal to minus g for simplification. Now, we know velocity is equal to rate of change of displacement. For a very small displacement, this is the instantaneous velocity. That is v is equal to ds by dt. 
now if you multiply by ds by ds uh, on the dv by dt side of the equation we see that ds by dt becomes v so v dv by ds is equal to acceleration which is equal to minus g now we just integrate uh, take ds to the other side and integrate the equations here i've just verified the answer but if you didn't want to verify the answer you can put instead of minus 30 as the upper limit put v1 here since we have to find the final velocity so if you integrate v dv you get it as v square by 2 you have to just substitute the limits in that you'll get 900 minus 400 by 2 which is equal to 250 on the other side minus g is just a constant we can take it out of the integral and we have to integrate ds from 0 to minus 25 why 0 to minus 25 because I've taken this as a zero level and minus 25 since it's going downwards, the displacement is downwards. It's the position coordinate, it's incorrect to say S as a displacement, it's the rate of change of position would be a better way to describe it. So 0 to minus 25 and minus 10 to minus 20, into minus 25 when you substitute the variables, it is equal to 250, 10 into 25 is 250, you get 250, 250 on both the sides. Hence this method of solving using calculus is right. And calculus is the basic fundamental method to solve it. You remember I have done a question where I showed you V plus U by 2 into T is the displacement. It's average velocity into time. Here we know the first equation of motion V is equal to U plus AT. We substitute in terms of V. We get 2U plus AT by 2 into T. Which means S is equal to UT plus half AT square we get. So we can derive the second equation of motion using that method. The concepts I've used in this video include the first equation of motion, second equation of motion, third equation of motion, and fourth equation of motion, and Galileo's laws of odd numbers. Just revising at the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and spread this information to as many people as you can. Thank you.